welcome guys we are talking about mass spectrometry okay and in previous discussion we have made two videos on mass spectrometry one is about the introduction of mass spectrometry and second one is about the instrumentation now we have seen uh, the instrumentation is designed in such a way that the procedure of measuring the molecular weight or molecular mass of each molecule can be uh, can be measured right so so if this is uh, our machinery of or, or the instrumentation of mass spectrometry what we can find we have seen that there are at, at three different regions among this actually four different regions one is we can see here uh, five different regions sorry actually five different regions first region you can see here which is the sample preparation region because in mass spec we must have gas gaseous sample or sample in the vaporous form but if you are dealing with solid and liquid samples we may we need to make them into a gaseous form that's why we need to have a heater here which is a sample preparation uh, port second region is ionization region remember this is ionization chamber so this is the second thing and in this ionization chamber what we are doing the basic principle of mass spec is establishing at this point the basic principle is we are heating our molecule with high velocity electrons and this high velocity electron heating upon to this molecule kicking one electron out so ultimately two electrons getting out from the molecule and now the molecule as electron is getting out it becomes a positive charge so one positive and one lone electron is there okay so it is converted from m to m dot plus one in this particular ionization chamber and after the ionization chamber what we are having we are having a region where we are accelerating these ions okay and fourth region of it is deflection region where we utilize a magnetic field to deflect those ions so the third part here we are talking about is the acceleration region or where those molecular ions that are generated are accelerated are uh, we've set up some type of electrodes there in such a way that these molecules are accelerated in the fourth part magnetic field is, is provided as a result of magnetic field those molecular ions which are broken down into fragments are deflected so the deflection and the fifth so this is the third region this is the fourth region and the fifth region is the detector now detector is a very sensitive device which when excited with electron generate energy it generates a measurable amount of energy which can be measured by computer system and can be plotted as a graph by looking at the graph we can tell that this protein or this sample is made up with this molecules and that molecules okay so these are the instrumentation steps we have covered now in this video we'll be talking about step by step process of this whole mass spectrometry and it will cover sample preparation is a very basic thing so if you are having solid the solid is must be melted first into liquid then liquid into gas so it's very easy we don't need to bother but we will be talking about this ionization step which is very important then this step i have already discussed so i will bypass this step this is not that much important again so major three different regions are there one is ionization second one is the deflection third one is the detection okay because if somebody tell you uh, tells you that you need to tell the basic arrangement of a mass spec uh, system then you can must uh, you can say that ionization chamber must be there then this analyzer part which is uh, the magnetic field region where the deflection occurs this part and third is the detector but these three things must be uh, known so for that reason we will be talking we will be focusing on these three regions ionization deflection and detection in detail okay so let's begin with that okay so the very first point above all we'll be talking about ionization okay and in this video we'll be talking about process step by step manner so first step is the ionization so first most important step is ionization 
Now in this ionization, as the term suggests, ionization means we are having a molecule which is having no charge. So net charge is zero. Now we are doing something to that molecule that the molecule is now charged with either a positive or a negative. It is called an ionization according to our basic chemistry knowledge. So if we consider this as a molecule M, okay. Now this M needs to be ionized, okay. How? Either this or this can happen. These things can happen according to our uh, basic chemistry. But what will happen in this case, what we are doing, remember, we are utilizing high energy electrons. So we are providing high energy, energy electrons. And these high energy electrons are hitting the molecular orbital, remember, of this M molecule. And as it is hitting those electrons of the outer shell, it is kicking one of the electrons out from the outer shell from this M molecule. As a result, so ultimately what it generates, it generates, so it kicks out one molecule, so one electron, so one electron, this black color electron is kicked out from this M. As a result of this kicking out, it gets one positive charge and also one electron is re released, so it, it will be having one single electron there for this molecule. So end at the end what we get one electron is kicked out and also the electron we provided will also come out. So ultimately this we eliminate this possibility. So no negative thing is going on because what we are doing we are kicking out electrons we are not adding electrons. Because remember many students make mistake here because we are providing the electron that doesn't mean we are adding electron. If that's the case then the net charge will be zero. So we are giving the electron to kick one electron out and this electron also comes out so ultimately two electrons are coming out so what we end up with we end up with something like that m and m so we can write it like this m plus one electron it ends up with this plus two electrons so this would be right right so two electrons are coming out so it's very fine two electrons are coming out and it is changed into this ion this ion is termed as remember molecular ion or molecular parent ion so this is very very important we are generating a molecular ion and this molecular ion the most important property of this molecular ion is this is very unstable the property is it is very very unstable now as the molecular ion is very unstable so it is having a tendency to broken down to be broken down into smaller fragments which are much stable than this molecular ion so, okay remember when i have discussed about the introduction i have told you that if i am unstable i am trying to produce something which is more stable than me and i'll be there like that so here also this molecular ions will be further broken down into segments for example large uh, then medium or something like this kind of segments okay suppose this kind of segments change the color okay okay so say this molecular ion or it could be something like that it could be a dot like this or, or whatever dot plus one like this whatever so this molecular ions can be divided into small segments. So it's not that it has to be divided into three different parts. It can divide in more or less. Because molecular ion, and these large mo fragments of the molecular ion can again be fragmented. So what we are having after the production of molecular ion, will be having fragmentization. So the molecular ion, as a result it is unstable. It will be broken down into fragments. Now these fragments will be called as fragment ion. This will be called fragment ions. So we end up with production of fragment ions. Now this is very important that we are not producing both the things at the same region. What we are producing, we are producing this molecular ions in the very first stage of the instrument which is the ionization chamber. But rest of the part, breaking down of molecular ions into fragment ions usually occurs in the <coughs> acceleration phase and in that magnetic field region. Now, because we give them uh, enough distance to be traveled, now these molecular ions as a result they are unstable, they can't travel uh, that far without being broken down. 
so for traveling that distance they most of the time they're broken down into this small fragments and I call those fragments fragment ions now those fragment ions will be will change their behavior according to the magnetic field so this is the first thing about ionization so this is the basic thing about ionization and why we need ionization because we need ionization because if we are having a molecule this molecule is net charge is zero then we cannot use this molecule to move in electric or magnetic field for any single molecule to be to be interactive or to be uh, for, for any molecule to move uh, surrounding surrounded by electronic or electric or magnetic field it must be charged either positive or negative so that's why this kind of ion production is very very important okay so this is the first step of first important step of mass spec now let us consider the second important step the second important step remember what I've told the deflection step right so whatever is generated here are the fragment ions now those fragments ions are will be taken and they will be deflected right now how they deflected they will be deflected under the influence of the magnetic uh, field okay so magnets will be placed remember we've seen the magnet chamber magnets will be placed and these fragment ions will be deflected according to the magnetic field so let us consider that part so fragment ions are generated from the fragment ions we will be talking about that part so the second part is deflection now in the deflection step so we have covered the first part which is ionization now we are talking about second part deflection and we will be covering the detection we have covered this and we are on the deflection step now in this deflection what we are happening that we are having three different types of molecular ions so suppose this one then slightly large so this one again and then say this red like that okay so we are having fragment ions which are generated from molecular ions during the the distance traveling from uh, the generation point to the detector through that magnetic field line so as they are traveling through this magnetic field line as they are divided into different sizes the velocity of their movement will be varying and also as they are having different mass this is very very important because the molecular ion is having a particular mass okay say it's a mass of uh, sorry it's a mass of say small m now as they are divided as it, as it is dividing into three different parts okay so it's a molecular ion let's write it like that it is having a particular mass the the highest mass above all now as it is divided into this small segment so each of this single molecule are having less mass than molecular ion so this is very much justified so if we add uh, fragment ions of all the molecular ions together we'll find the mass of a molecular ion get it or not so if we add so suppose this is m1 it is m2 this is m3 it will be very very closer to the mass of this molecular ion right because this molecular ion is fragmentized into three this three different fragments in this case now what will happen here as they are varying in the mass but we also know that this m1 is greater than m2 and this is greater than m3 because if, if we think this is an M1, this is M2, this is M3, so you'll find something like that. M1 is greater than M2, M2 is greater than M3. Okay. So as the masses are varying from one fragment ion to another fragment ion, the deflection pattern will also change. Now, what we mean by deflection is that we are surrounding these charges with magnetic field. Now here if, if we are uh, talking about a magnetic field for example say let us draw this magnetic field so this is a magnetic field I am drawing magnetic field strength in this way like that say yes so this is a magnetic field for example th in this orientation magnetic field is there now this fragment ions will be moving from this direction to that direction how we can make this ions to move from into a particular direction 
we have discussed it earlier by placing electrodes right so this fragment ions are moving from this direction to that direction so the fragment ion movement is in this direction now during this movement what will happen according to this uh, magnetic field those molecules as they are charged those fragments as they are charged they will have an effect because this is an electric field now each single ions whether it is a positively charged or a negatively charged ion will have some influence definitely due to the presence of a magnetic or electric field so here as a result of magnetic field it leads some effect to these ions so they are deflected so they are deflected means as they are going in a straight path due to the presence of the magnetic field they just curve into some angle okay for example if there are no magnetic field they will be going in straight directions like that but as their presence of this magnetic field their path will be deviated their path will be deflected okay now as their paths are deflected now there is a question which one among them have encountered the highest deflection and which one will encounter the lowest deflection this is a question now from the the physics basics view physics point of view we can tell as this m1 is having the highest mass right it is having a highest mass so we need much more field to deflect it the same as like this them what it means so in this case what we are telling that this magnetic field strength is the same okay so we are not varying strength for different uh, fragments the fragments are moving strength is same so on to a particular strength of magnetic field we will need much more strength to deviate this one than this one because this one is having less mass lesser mass it will be easier to just kick it out right it's a basic uh, concept if you are having less mass it is easier to kick it out higher mass it will be it, it, it will take much more difficulty to kick it out so the m1 will be least deviated and m3 highest deviated okay or the most deviated so this m1 fragment will be least deviated m2 and m3 greater deviated so what it happens so m1 so if i draw something like that so the point or movement of m1 say in this direction will be something like that or m2 will be like that or m3 will be like that so the deflection pattern sorry i have drawn everything with the with same colors so anyways so this is m2 i'm changing the color in this case so m3 okay and this is m1 okay so you can you can look at this that how the deflection pattern changes as we are providing a homogeneous magnetic field remember this is a homogeneous magnetic field presence of a homogeneous magnetic field is very important if there is not a homogeneous magnetic field that this kind of effect cannot be accomplished okay so homogeneous magnetic field is there this molecules this fragment ions are moving but what happens here this big part having higher shape and size will deviate or deflect less smallest part deviate or deflect most so what you get after all to reach this detector so detector will be present here so let us draw the detector so say here is our detector say this is our detector okay now they are going to hit the detector as this highest as this m1 charge as it is having a higher mass is deflected less it is going to reach the detector fast right because the acceleration will be highest for the high heavy mass compound so if you are having a heavy mass compound you just kick it it will going it will go farther and farther because of this heavy mass it's again a basic physics so as the m1 is deviated less it will reach the detector faster as the m3 is deviated least uh, deviated the most it will reach the detector the last 
okay and m2 is the intermediate in all these cases so they will reach the detector one by another so the detection pattern will be first for m1 it will be first m2 will be second m3 will be third okay so detector will be heated by first m1 then m2 then m3 that's how they will be detected here we will be talking about the detection method in detail later but here this deflection or the deviation is very very important why because it in it gives the system a pattern of detection right because whatever we are doing here the detector is a sensitive thing which are amplifying the signal which is receives from the previous case and by amplifying it it generates a measurable signal and provide it to the computer system where softwares are there in set up in algorithm and from that we can have a plot of graph so if there are no pattern in the detection it will be very very tedious for us to design that algorithm and also it will be very tedious for the computer to know what is going on because if this field is not applied it's just the fragment arms moving randomly hitting the detector sometimes m1 hit before sometimes m3 then these things are happening then it will be con it is it will be huge confusion for the detector also to detect the right amount of signal okay so this is a very important part now remember i have told you that homo homogeneous magnetic field is important for the proper movement and again to give the order but also what we can do we can change the magnetic field yes we can change the magnetic field but not in the middle of the experiment suppose we are uh, just turning this on after a few times this m1 m2 m3 this fragment ions are moving and we just change it after some time we can't do this so suppose we run it once then everything is stopped then we, we need to restart this machine then we can change this magnetic field now by changing the magnetic field we can actually control which one of the fragment molecules is to be detected or which one of the fragment molecules are hitting the detector okay we can actually determine this okay how for example say if we want to detect only this one say if we want to detect only uh, say in this case suppose this detector is placed somewhere here like that okay now in during this phase if the detector is placed i have drawn the detector pretty long but the detector is not that much long okay say so this is the detector up to that point is the detector okay detector is not that much long okay now what happens here if the magnetic field is arranged in this particular strain suppose the strength is here strength 1 in this strength 1 condition m1 is not going to be heated onto this detector m2 is also not hitting the detector only m3 is hitting the detector right not m1 not m2 only m3 is hitting the detector so by applying this particular strength to the magnetic field because if we are trying the magnetic field we can vary the strength of magnetic field that's so easy now by varying the magnetic field we can change it so in this particular strength so in this strength 1 we can uh, tell that the detector is only going to detect the m3 not the m1 not the m2 so just providing this magnetic strength if we run the same sample we get the plot of only this m3 fragments but not the other fragments okay then suppose we increase the field increase the magnetic field increasing the magnetic field uh, is denoted by broadening of this field in this picture okay so i am broadening this so that means we are increasing okay so we increase the magnetic field now by increasing the field what is what will happen the deflection pattern will change so this small thing will deflect much this one will deflect like that this one will slightly vary the deflection okay 
so by changing the strength of the magnetic field we can change the deflection pattern so now in strength 1 remember in strength 1 we have seen the detection of only m3 okay but now we can see the detec detection of only m2 so m1 is not detected m3 is not hitting the uh, detector because it is much more deflected so it can cannot hit the detector so now in strain 2 we m2 is only hitting the detector so we can measure only m2 but not the m1 and m3 so here this magnetic field is giving us the freedom to play with this different fragment ions so we can varying the strength by varying the strength what we can ensure that which of the fragment ion is hitting the detector so we can be ensured that this fragment is going to hit the detector so we get the detection so by looking at the plot we can tell this plot is only driven by m2 or m3 by or, or say it is only by m1 m2 it's only by so sometimes the field can all uh, change in such a way that two uh, molecular ions are hitting uh, two fragments and ions are hitting uh, one is not hitting like that so it gives us a freedom to ensure that which part is hitting or not so by looking at the plot we can determine that this plot or this data is simply because of this or this or maybe combined both like that okay so this is very important we can play or manipulate this region so that's why this magnetic field provide uh, the provision of this magnetic field is also important okay so we have discussed the deflection after the deflection study everything goes to detector so every fragment molecules or whatever if there are any molecular ions left they are also going to hit the detector I have told you that the molecular ions are very very unstable but still this molecular ions can travel this part of distance and can hit detector okay it, they are unstable but they can hit the detector okay though this is very very rare but it can happen so in the third place we'll be talking about so we have also discussed about deflection in the third place we'll be talking about detection now let's focus on the detection so i'm not going to erase this part because it is required okay so the third and the final is the detection now the detection part is simply dealing with the detector now detector is a electronic device and the actual goal of detector is that what it receives is a single molecular fragment ion it's a single fragment ion right it's a simple electron some very few very little amount of energy right an electron one single electron a very little amount of energy but the detector is having the enormous capability of amplifying that into enormous amount of energy it can do this and this is the main or major feature of the detection detector is amplification amplification is the major feature of detection okay so in this detector what happens there are uh, there are a lot of different kinds of deter detectors available in the market so whatever I am talking I'll be talking a very basic type of detector and schematic presentation so here what is happening here something like that so here are dynodes say like that so say these are dynodes arranged inside the detector it's a very simple detector we have a four dynodes the importance of giving the dynodes are you guys tend to play the ping pong game right so th those games the balls are jumping and hitting this different regions like that so here the exact things are happening so those electrons here will uh, will be acting as those ping pong balls so this electron suppose it, it hits one dynode now as it hit one dynode this dynode this the ability of the dynode so these are called dynodes the ability of these dynodes 
are that this ability uh, this dynodes can amplify the signal that is hitting them or amplify the electron packet those are hitting them so the signals whatever they are receiving as electron packets now these dynodes are amplifying them how so here in this case each of the single dynodes can amplify the signal by 3x so if one electron hit them they will develop three electrons like that so here they will develop three electrons now this packet will hit this dynode now this will generate three into three nine electrons now this nine electrons are going to hit he, he, this one and this is going to generate 27 electrons so you can see the multiplication in three is going on now again this will hit this one so it will generate 27 into uh, 3 means 81 electrons. So finally, as a result of this electron hitting and releasing, end up with something huge amount of electron. So the energy that comes in as a single electron, which is not at all detectable, here comes the important part. This energy is not enough to detect or to provide or to, to provide a signal to the computer. So computer cannot understand if we provide the signal of only electron packet to the computer. Okay. But when it's generated into 81 electrons, this is a detectable signal. So here I am only concerning about 81, but this is not also detectable signal. There are millions of electrons generated. Actually, there are millions of electrons are produced using this kind of detectors. So this gives the detectable signal. Now this signal is provided, it's plugged into the computer. Now as they are plugged into the computer, computer will use this signal and it is plotting a graph and it will plot a graph according to the algorithm which was feed into the computer system okay feed into the memory of the computer so it will plot the graph plotting of graph this happens okay so this is the whole thing. The electrons are hitting the dynodes. The dynodes are also releasing electrons. They are amplifying the energy packet and then finally amplified into a certain extent which can be detectable and feed onto the computer which can develop into a graph. Okay. Now we finally get the graph as a result. So in this whole experiment from the beginning this is going to be our result. We don't know this is the basic truth. We don't know whatever is going on inside. For a machine operator, that he don't know this. He definitely knows the theory, which you guys also are going to know by looking at these videos. But we don't know what is going on for for our unknown protein, for our unknown sample. Is it be protein or uh, any other sample? But what we are going to know is getting this graph. Okay, and the graph is looking like something like that. So it's a graph of something look like this, like this, and so on. So it looks like this peak like this. Okay, and and this x-axis and it is y. So in this x-axis it is mass by charge ratio. In the y-axis it is the abundance of a particular molecule. So it's a percentage abundance and it is a mass by charge. Or or you can say the intensity in the y axis, whatever. Okay. So by looking at the graph, now you need to detect what kind of unknown thing you are dealing with. So this is not end. By looking at the graph, you need to detect or deduct or or is you can say a deduction. Now by deduction, you need to find which are the molecules, what are the different things that are producing your molecule, what are the atoms that are producing your molecule by looking at the graph. And we can do a pretty fair job.
by looking at this graph and analyzing of the graph. Now here comes the importance of the very very important uh, or, or uh, very experienced mass spect analyzer because this analyzation at the last step is the most important step because all the things what I have discussed will be given by the machine. Now you need to look at the graph and analyze it. Okay. Now in the future video we'll be talking about so we have covered detection also. In the future video we'll be talking about this graph and how to analyze the graph. In the one video we'll be talking about the basic features of the graph and what kind of graph we are generating. Then we'll be talking about how to analyze the graph. Okay. And how to deduct what is the unknown molecule. Okay. So that's it. And I hope this video is helping you to understand the process of mass spec. Thank you.